Let's give a hand to our accompanist. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Welcome to this exciting, wonderful service of commissioning and ordination. Uh, I'm Tom Choi. I'm the chair of the Board of Ordained Ministry, and I want to uh, welcome you all. We're going to, uh, I'm going to invite you all to, to um, stand in body and or spirit to sing, and we're going to sing our opening song, and that will uh, cue our processional. So let us stand and sing This Little Light of Mine. The grace of Jesus Christ be with you all. We come together to praise God, to hear the Holy Word, and to seek for ourselves and others the power, presence, and direction of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. It's going to be on the screen. We're going to pray together. start, you all join me when you can. <laughs> Eternal God, by Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, you gave to us, your apostles, many excellent gifts. Give your grace to all servants of your church, that we may, with diligence and
Y'all can have a seat. Y'all. Ministry is the work of God, done by the people of God. And through baptism, all Christians are made part of the priesthood of all believers, the church, Christ's body, made visible in the world. We all share in Christ's ministry of love and service for the redemption of the human family and for the whole creation. Therefore, in celebration of our common ministry, I call upon all God's people gathered here to remember your baptism and to be thankful. Who presents these candidates to be ordained? We have recommended them in our local congregations. We present them with our prayers and support. If the members of the Board of Ordained Ministry, will they please stand and join together with me our response. We have examined these candidates according to the standards of our discipline and this annual conference of the United Methodist Church. We present them with our prayers and support. We present these persons for ordination as elders in the church. Richard Dean Annette. Leah Michelle Booth. And baby. <laughs> Christopher Robert Carter. Kyung Zoe Choi. Day Il David Choi. Brogan Noel Hunt. Baesun Kim. Alexander Stephen Powell. <laughs> Stephanie Lynn Rice. Siona Sione Tongia Tui Tui Ud We present them with our prayers and support. We present these persons for commissioning as provisional members preparing for ordained ministry as elders. Ki Hyun Cho. <laughs> Selena Ann Kidd. <laughs> Hyun Sup. Kwan, <laughs> Chong Ku Lee, <laughs> Sejin O, oh, <laughs> Mary Ann Pickard, <laughs> and Joshua Edward Zulueta. <laughs> we present them with our prayers and our support. These persons are by God's grace to be ordained or commissioned for set-apart ministry in Christ's holy church. One moment, one more. <laughs> one more? We present this person for recognition of orders in the United Methodist Church as an elder, James Anthony Boger. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> these persons are by God's grace to be ordained or commissioned for set-apart ministry in Christ's holy church. Those authorized by the church to inquire about them have discerned that they are persons of sound learning, of Christian character. They possess the necessary signs of God's grace and have demonstrated a profound commitment to serve Jesus Christ. Therefore, they believe them to be duly called to serve God. We ask you, people of God, 
to declare your assent to the ordination and commissioning of these persons, do you trust that they are worthy, by God's grace, to be ordained or commissioned? We do. Thanks be to God. And will you uphold them in their ministry? With God's help, we will. And will you show them your approval? Please remain standing and join in the reciting of the Apostle Creed. Do you believe in God? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. The scriptural reading for today comes from Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. After Moses, the Lord's servant, died, the Lord spoke to Joshua, Nun's son. He had been Moses' helper. My servant Moses is dead. Now get ready to cross over the Jordan with this entire people to the land that I'm going to give to the Israelites. I'm giving you every place where you set foot, exactly as I promised Moses. Your territory will stretch it from the desert and the Lebanon as far as the great Euphrates River, including all Hittite land up to the Mediterranean Sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you during your lifetime. I will be with you in the same way I was with Moses. I won't desert you or leave you. Be brave and strong because you are the one who will help these people take possession of the land which I pledged to give to their ancestors. Be very brave and strong as you carefully obey all of the instruction that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Don't deviate even a bit from it, either to the right or left. Then you will have success wherever you go. Never stop speaking about this instruction scroll. Recite it day and night so you can carefully obey everything written in it. Then you will accomplish your objectives and you will succeed. I've commanded you to be brave and strong, haven't I? Don't be alarmed or terrified because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
So I, I googled uh, Bishop Bob Hoshibata this morning to get some facts about him, to introduce him. And um, he was born and raised in Hawaii, and his childhood church is Wahiwaha. How, did I, how do you say that? Is that right? United Methodist Church. It's still the, the church of his heart. He attended Claremont School of Theology and received his D-Men in 1977. He was the crusade scholar there. He was ordained a deacon in 1974 and ordained an elder in 1979. He served at North Gardenia United Methodist Church for seven years. And then he was 14 years a senior pastor at Blaine Memorial United Methodist in Seattle. Then he became a DS in Seattle District. In July of 2004, he was elected a bishop, and he served the Portland area and the Phoenix area. He is married to Greta since 1974. I don't know if Greta's in the room, but is she? Uh, there she is. Greta is a, a, a beautiful companion and friend to all of us. And... Um, he has children, and they have grandchildren as well. The most important thing, though, that I want you to know about Bishop Hoshibata is that he is a creative soul. He is humble. He is faithful. And when he talks to people, he sees their gifts. He doesn't see always they're not gifts. <laughs> he sees the places where that person can shine. And the other thing I know about him is when the moment arises, he is courageous in standing for justice. Uh, the most important thing I want you to know, though, is he is my friend. So I'd like to introduce to you or invite to you to, uh, to applause for Bishop Bob. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Everybody okay? Yes. All right. I am too. <laughs> Bishop Dottie, distinguished guests, lay and clergy members of this California Pacific Annual Conference, I thank you for your warm welcome. And Bishop Dottie, thank you for the invitation for me to accompany you at this, your first annual conference. Um, as Bishop Dottie said, I grew up in this conference, um, born and raised in Wahewa. Where's our Wahewa crew? How are you doing? Born and raised in uh, Wahewa United Methodist Church, which was a place where I learned how to be a disciple, uh, what was important to me in order to give my life to Jesus Christ and serve the church. So um, I'm a product of this annual conference. Uh, Greta and I moved back into the annual conference after my retirement, so we're back. <laughs> so what a joy it is to be here. And as uh, Bishop Dottie said, um, I was uh, first ordained in this conference we were at Redlands, remember, where there was no air conditioning. <laughs> um, and that would be 49 years tomorrow. So it's just a great coincidence. I, um, I said to the ordinance and the commissionees uh, that I went through all of my material and I came across the um, uh, record of my ordination 49 years ago and the bulletin that I had kept, I have somehow lost the middle section of that <laughs> bulletin. So I don't know who preached at my ordination service. <laughs> and for you ordinance and commissionees, it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> but uh, what a joy and a privilege it is for me to, uh, to stand with you and, and to uh, have this opportunity to, to preach. So as we begin, will you join me in prayer? Loving God, our gracious creator, look down upon us with a smile radiant like the sun of Hawaii. 
Gracious God, look upon us and bless us as you have since this conference began with fine leadership and devoted persons willing to take up the yoke of ministry in your name. We come now to this service, and I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all, our, all of our hearts might be pleasing to you. For you, O oh God, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, as we gather for worship on an occasion such as this, it's natural, is it not, that we turn our thoughts to some of the scripture passages that talk about God's call in the lives of many people. I think we do that partly because when we read the scripture message about God calling us, we begin to see ourselves in the drama that the Bible talks about. We see ourselves and we remember, perhaps, our own call to ministry. Today at lunch, I want you to ask someone who is seated next to you, what do you remember about the moment when God first called you? And I pray that you will have some wonderful memories to share over lunch. So here we are uh, with the story in the Bible about God calling Joshua uh, to leadership. God is calling Joshua to lead God's people after Moses has died and the promised land is just a stone throw away across the River Jordan. And Moses has died, we know, just before he could have led them across the, the river to the promised land, but that was not the responsibility or the job of Moses, evidently. God had a different plan. And so Joshua is called to take up the mantle and lead the people to the promised land. Can you imagine what Joshua might have been thinking or feeling at that moment? Perhaps he was saying, um, we can be pretty sure that God called me, but why would he do it now? <laughs> he might have felt overwhelmed. Or perhaps he felt inadequate, insecure, unsure of himself, having to follow in the footsteps of such a beloved leader? Any of you under appointment ever feel that? <laughs> Maybe Joshua was saying, how am I supposed to follow that person? Maybe he was simply glad to be given the chance to prove his abilities eager to serve God at last. He might have said something like, uh, it's about time. <laughs> it's my turn to take the lead. Or we might imagine that he felt afraid of the enormous responsibility he was being given. I don't think I can do this, he might have said. This is too big a job for little old me. We've said some of those things, haven't we? And so to shore up Joshua's self-confidence and ready him for leadership, God delivers this message to him. Be strong and courageous. I believe that these words are exactly what the United Methodist Church needs to hear at this time, at this historic moment in our lives. Like the people of Israel, we are at a critical juncture in our history. All of us in leadership, whether it's lay leadership or clergy leadership, all of us in leadership in our churches are being tasked with being strong and courageous in this time. We must be strong and courageous shepherds for the people in our churches and in our communities. God has placed in our hands the very future of the United Methodist Church. In your hands and in mine. 
in my hands and yours the very future of our United Methodist Church. And as we continue to engage in our usual routine of, of uh, bold and active ministries for justice, mercy, and compassion, as we continue to do the thing that we United Methodists do, we also have to pay considerable attention, listening prayerfully to discussion and debates about unity, disaffiliation, and then as we hear what our people are saying, we must fashion a way forward into our future. The work of the church and its ministry in a post-COVID, post-General Conference 2016 world, that work is not easy and it's not always fun. Ministry today and into the future can be bewildering, discouraging, and frightening. But there is hope. There is hope. About two decades ago, I happened to be in a meeting with one of my colleague bishops. He was a, a bishop in the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. Something something had just made the news about the United Methodist Church and its, at that time, debate about human sexuality. I, I can't even remember what it was exactly. But something had come uh, into the public forum about the United Methodist Church and the crisis we were in. And so uh, my friend took me aside uh, sensing not only the depth of that crisis, but also some despair in my own soul. My friend took me aside and said, Bob, I just want you to know, as you go through these rough waters, it will be difficult and painful. But when you emerge on the other side of the conflict, he said, you will find a joyful dissipating of the burden of struggles you are experiencing, and it will be like the lifting of an incredible weight that you have been carrying for way too long. That was 20 years ago, friends, we're still there. <laughs> so here we are then, needing to hear again God's wise words to Joshua. And they echo words that we have in our hearts. Be strong and courageous. Uh, the words, be strong and courageous, uh, they bring to mind uh, another voice um, spoken by a wise, wise person. Emerging out of in unimaginable harsh treatment and 27 years of, of brutal incarceration for speaking and acting against apartheid, Nelson Mandela shared similar words. Mandela said, I learned that courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave person is not the one who does not feel afraid, but is the one who conquers that fear. Courage is not the absence of fear. It is inspiring others to move beyond it. As I ponder these words, I see now why in 2009, the United Nations declared Nelson Mandela Day a day when we would celebrate Mandela's life and his work and his stand for justice, and a day when we would take the message public. So if you're going back to your churches and you're preaching tomorrow, talk about Nelson Mandela Day. As I ponder his words, I have no doubt that God is requiring us to be strong and courageous in these days. These words are from a person 
whose very presence exuded strength and courage and determination and a persistence in the fight for justice. In 2006, the Council of Bishops of our United Methodist Church met for the first time on international soil. We met in the city of Maputo in Mozambique. We learned that Nelson Mandela and his wife, Gracia Michelle, had been invited to join us and that they had accepted and would dine with us and then speak to us on that evening. So, as Mandela spoke on that evening, we were all spellbound. You know how it is when you're in the presence of greatness and you know it. You know it. So that evening, to be in the same room as Nelson Mandela was just incredible as an experience for me. His words that night inspired all of us and invoked in us a desire to demonstrate our own spiritual strength and strong leadership. I imagined God speaking to Mandela during his time of imprisonment and trial, and I could imagine God saying to Mandela, my servant, be strong and courageous. So on that night in Mozambique, I, I felt God speaking to me through Mandela, urging me to be strong and courageous. And likewise, I believe that God is saying to all of us now, be strong and courageous. You got it. I should sit down. <laughs> I'd like to share one more story about that evening in Mozambique. That evening, as Mandela was speaking to the bishops, his wife, who was seated next to him, quietly slipped him a piece of paper. Mandela discreetly took it, opened it, silently read it, and then said to the Council of Bishops, my wife says I have spoken long enough. <laughs> And he continued, she says that I should stop now and sit down. <laughs> he then brought his speech to a very eloquent conclusion and began to sit down. But before he left the microphone, he said, now I shall return this little note to my wife so she might put it in her pocket to use at my next engagement. <laughs> And he sat down to a standing ovation. <laughs> I digress. Let's get back to God's word to us as we face the future. God is pleading with us to live with strength and courage as we lead and serve the church and our communities in this very moment. No matter where your journey of faith as United Methodist laity or clergy may take you, as we work in ministry wherever we are planted, let's remember that God assures us with this promise. God says, I will be with you always, with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. And where will that be? You will no doubt journey with people in your pews and in your communities who celebrate joy-filled events in their lives. You will travel the mournful road and hold the hand of compassion in times of loss or spiritual challenge. You will navigate waters of dissent, of disagreement, of deep conflict and division. You will share the holy sacraments, especially with the children youth, and young adults who are in your care. You will lead your communities to speak and act for justice for all people. You will sometimes 
succeed extraordinarily, and there will be times when you fail miserably. But in all times, in all times, God will be with you always, wherever you go. This is our inheritance as Christ followers. So, let me ask, those of you who are being commissioned today, will you please rise? And will those of you who are being ordained or whose uh, orders will be recognized, please rise and join them if you are able? Wow, what a class. To you, on behalf of our God, I say, on behalf of our God, be strong, be courageous, for our God is with you wherever you may go. And now I invite the clergy and the laity and the friends of this annual conference to quickly rise. Receive these words in the good, joyful, loving moments ahead, as well as any challenging and discouraging moments you encounter. In your service and in your ministry, be strong. Be courageous, for God is with you always, wherever you go. And now, I shall end here and sit down. <laughs> because... I see my beloved wife <laughs> reaching into her pocket for a note, and perhaps it says, you have spoken long enough, go and sit down, and let's get to the real reason why we have come today. God bless you, amen. Dear friends, by affirming the covenant of baptism, all members of Christ's holy church pledge to serve as Christ's representatives in the world. Christ gave all of us this command, ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. We have asked and the Lord has answered. These siblings know our Savior's concern for God's people. They see the plentiful harvest and are ready to respond generously to the Lord in the words of the prophet, Here I am, send me.
urged on by the love of Christ and strengthened by the Holy Spirit, they now come to declare in public their desire to live out the covenant made at their baptism. By binding themselves to the service of God under the su supervision of the bishop and the guidance of colleagues in full connection and by being appointed to share as servant leaders in the body of Christ. Today we commission them to service as they continue to prepare for ordained ministry among us. God of the apostles and prophets, of the martyrs and teachers, you raise up women and men to be apostolic leaders in your church. So by your Holy Spirit, help these your servants to understand and live the mystery of your love with boldness and joy. Deepen their sense of purpose as they exercise commissioned ministry. And empower them and those who will walk with them to guide their ministry together with all of your people, to heal the sick, to love the outcast, to resist evil, to preach the word, and give themselves freely for your name's sake. Amen. Amen. Candidates for commissioning as provisional elders. Ki Hyun Cho. <laughs> Ki Hyun Cho, pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, among, um, among, upon Ki Hyun Cho. Send him now to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, to announce the reign of God, and to equip the church for ministry in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Selena Ann Kidd. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Selena and Kidd. Send her now to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, to announce the reign of God, to equip the church for ministry. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. up, Juan. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Yun Sup Wan. Send him now to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, to announce the reign of God, and to equip the church for ministry in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Chonggu Lee. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon jung Lee. Li. Send him now to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, to announce the reign of God, and to equip the church for ministry in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Sejin <laughs> Oh.
Pour out your Holy Spirit on said Jin O. Oh. Send him now to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, to announce the reign of God, and to equip the church for ministry. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mary Ann Pickard. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Mary Ann Pickard. Send her now to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, to announce the reign of God, and to equip the church for ministry in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 <laughs> Joshua Edward Zuleta. <laughs> Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Joshua Edward Zuleta and send him now to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, to announce the reign of God, and to equip the church for ministry in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. As these persons are ordained by the church to the office and work of elders to which we believe they have been called by the Holy Spirit, let us pray for them. We praise you, eternal God, because you have called us to be a priestly people offering to you acceptable worship through Jesus Christ our Lord, apostle and high priest, shepherd and bishop of our souls. We thank you that by dying, Christ has overcome death and having ascended into heaven has poured forth gifts abundantly on your people, making some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, to build up Christ's body, and to fulfill your gracious purpose in the world. Give to these, your servants, the grace and power they need to serve you in ministry. Make them faithful pastors, patient teachers, and wise counselors. Enable them to serve without reproach, to proclaim the gospel of salvation, to administer the sacraments of the new covenant, and to offer with all people spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
candidates for ordination as elders. Richard Dean Annette. Almighty God, pour upon Richard the Holy Spirit for the office and work of an elder in Christ's holy church. Amen. Amen. Richard Dean Annette, take authority as an elder to preach the word of God, to administer the holy sacraments, and to order the life of the church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. <laughs> Your new style. <laughs> Leah Michelle Booth. <laughs> Almighty God. Pour upon Leah the Holy Spirit for the office and work of an elder in Christ's holy church. Amen. She's right here, honey. She's right here. Leah Michelle Booth, take authority as an elder to preach the word of God, to administer the holy sacraments, and to order the life of the church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christopher Robert Carter. <laughs> Almighty God, pour upon Christopher the Holy Spirit for the office and work of an elder in Christ's holy church. Amen. Christopher Robert Carter, take authority as an elder to preach the word of God, to administer the holy sacraments, and to order the life of the church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Stay there. Congratulations. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Kwong Zui Cho. Almighty God, pour upon Kwong the Holy Spirit for the office and work of an elder in Christ's holy church. Amen. Kwan Dui Cho, take authority as an elder to preach the word of God, to administer the holy sacraments, and to order the life of the church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Hail David Choi. Almighty God, pour upon Dale the Holy Spirit for the office and work of an elder in Christ's holy church. Amen. Dale David Choi. Take authority as an elder to preach the word of God, to administer the holy sacraments, and to order the life of the church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Amen. Congratulations. <laughs> Brogan Noel Hunt. <clears throat> Almighty God, pour upon Brogan the Holy Spirit for the office and work of an elder in Christ's holy church. Amen. Brogan Noel Hunt, take authority as an elder to preach the word of God, to administer the holy sacraments, and to order the life of the church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Kaisan Kim. <laughs> Almighty God, pour upon Besan the Holy Spirit <clears throat> for the office and work of an elder in Christ's holy church. Amen. Amen. Besan Kim. Take authority as an elder to preach the word of God, to administer the holy sacraments, and to order the life of the church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Stay there. Alexander Stephen Powell. Almighty God, pour upon Alex the Holy Spirit for the office and work of an elder in Christ's holy church. Amen. Amen. Alexander Stephen Powell, take authority as an elder to preach the word, to administer the, the holy sacraments, and to order the life of the church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Stephanie Lynn Rice. <laughs> Almighty God, pour upon Stephanie the Holy Spirit for the office and work of an elder in Christ's holy church. Amen. Stephanie Lynn Rice, take authority as an elder to preach the word of God, to administer the holy sacraments, and to order the life of the church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sione Tongia Tuipulotu. Almighty God, pour upon Sione the Holy Spirit for the office and work of an elder in Christ's holy church. Amen. Amen. Sione Tongia Tuipuloto, take authority as an elder to preach the word of God, to administer the holy sacraments, and to order the life of the church 
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Congratulations, Yoni. recognition of orders in the United Methodist Church as an elder, James Anthony Boger. James Anthony Boger, we now recognize you as an elder in full connection in the United Methodist Church. Let us sing our hymn, Pass It On. Please stand as you're able. special offerings collected before and during this 39th annual session of the California Pacific Annual Conference will support the Immigration Crisis Fund. We are facing unprecedented numbers of refugees, asylum seekers, and immigrants at our borders. Immigration reform is exacerbating the issues experienced by all people seeking safety and shelter. Donations will fund welcome centers, care packages, and various ministries among the migrants across our conference, as well as working towards justice reform measures. Because this 2023 session is both online and in person, giving can take place in the following ways. You can give online when you registered or at www.calpacumc.org donate. You can mail your check payable to the California Pacific Conference uh, to the address listed on the screen. Uh, or you can give in the designated baskets by cash or check, of course, again, payable to the California Pacific Conference as you enter or exit this worship service.
steadfast be. Lord, steadfast be. with me. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the joy that you bring to us this day. And we ask that we would turn that joy into gratitude, a gratitude that propels us to graciously and gratefully give a portion of what we have received so that all of your children may know your love and be physically and spiritually nourished. Bless these gifts that we give so that these things may come to fruition. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ who gave everything for us. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Except for the candidates, that are, the persons who have just been commissioned, ordained, and recognized, would you please stand for a moment? So these words are addressed to you, Anthony. After due examination of your call and ministry in another part of Christ's Holy Church, we now welcome you into this communion. You have given assurance of your faith and Christian experience. You have renewed the vows of your ordination, and you have embraced our own. Committing yourself to accept and uphold faithfully the doctrine, the liturgy, and discipline of the United Methodist Church. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to say those last few words to you. And Bishop Hoshibata, would you say these words right here? Hmm? After due examination of your calling minister. Yeah, just, just to them. To them. Oh, to them, okay. So, to this wonderful class, after due examination of your call and ministry, we give thanks for your ministry and invite you to receive our congratulations and our assurance that we rejoice that you have been called to serve among us and pray that God will always guide your ministries. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, let's get that word. Christ our Lord invites us to his table, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to be at peace with God and with one another. Let us therefore confess our sin before God and before one another. Merciful God, God we, we confess. confess.
Dear faithful friends in Jesus Christ, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. So now the Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You built your church on the foundation of the prophets and the apostles and instituted a holy ministry so that your prophetic and apostolic word might be heard until the end of time. And so in this moment, with your people on earth and with the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup from the table. It might have been smaller than this one. (laughs) (laughs) And he lifted it and he said, This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you gather together and drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, on these gifts of bread and wine, And make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, so that we might be that for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by your blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Jesus Christ. Make us one with each other. And make us one as we minister to the whole world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit and in your holy church for all the honor and all the glory is yours, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray the Lord's Prayer in the language of our own choosing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to invite the communion servers to come and help us prepare to receive the holy meal. We want you to know that there are prepackaged gluten-free stations that are on the left, far left, and far right. And these are the safe stations if you need to be uh, in the safe areas, and they will be wearing gloves there. Please come to the aisle when you are ready on your right, and let. And if you need us to bring communion to you, please let the ushers know. Come, let us eat and drink at God's table. Okay, can somebody do this part?
love the sound of an after-dinner party. <laughs> and I love hearing that across the room because, you know, when Jesus gave us this, this ritual, it probably sounded more like that than our quiet holy spaces. So let us pray. We thank you, gracious God, for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us and united us in the communion of your Holy Spirit. We bless you for raising up... It's coming. We bless you for raising up among us faithful servants. Clothe them with us with your righteousness, that we with them may glorify you by the giving of ourselves to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you stand and receive the benediction? Beloved family, beloved church, beloved saints and sinners, go from this place knowing that you have been changed, that your life is in order for the Lord, for God's work, for God's world. And take the love that God has given to you and spread it throughout the places that God sends you, the high places, the low places, the places that nobody knows about, the rural communities, the places that are far away, the places where the glory doesn't shine to the rest of the world, but God's glory is there. Take that love that God has placed in your heart and change our world by loving them. And do so in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. Amen.